Hi gang! This is a cool little motor, often called a ball bearing motor. It looks like it shouldn't work at all. The only electrical connections to it are this wire and this wire. The electricity goes from this wire, across this strip of copper, through this bearing, to this shaft, and then through this bearing, across this strip of copper, and to this wire. And that's it! The flywheel, the supports, and the base are all just pieces of wood. So there's no obvious reason why it should work. I'll show you how I made it and explain how it works. Here's a little on how I made it. The roller bearings were sealed ones that I removed the grease from. Removing the grease is important to give good electrical contact through the bearing. You can see my video on how I did that by clicking here, or on another link I'll give at the end of this video. The shaft is simply this quarter inch bolt, there are these five nuts, and the flywheel is just a chunk of scrap hardwood. To make it, I start by putting one bearing on the shaft, along with a nut to hold it there, then another nut, the flywheel, and another nut. And lastly, another nut with the other bearing up against it, followed by the last nut. I then tighten it all up. Notice that the nuts don't prevent the bearings from turning freely, allowing the whole thing to turn. And here's the wooden base with the vertical supports glued in place. I sit the rotor on it. I screw the first copper strip over a bearing to both hold it in place and to make electrical contact with it. And I do the same with the other copper strip. Here are the electronics. There's this normal wall switch with a power cord connected to one end of it. The other end of the switch is connected to this microwave oven transformer. I've connected this 120 volt AC power from the wall to the coil with the thick wires in many turns. It's this coil with just a single turn that will go to the ball bearing motor. I put the ball bearing motor in place and then I connect it up to that single turn coil on the transformer. My input coil has around 70 turns, and my output coil has one, so the voltage is stepped down by 1 70th. 120 volts becomes 1.7 volts, but the current is stepped up by the same amount, 70 times, which means it's likely to be in the hundreds of amps. Too much current, in fact, but this transformer is what I happen to have. Time for some fun. I plug into a wall socket, I give the flywheel a spin, and turn on the power. Notice that the flywheel speeds up. I don't leave it turned on too long because the bearings heat up from the current and leaving it on too long will damage them. My wires are also a little small for the current, but it runs fairly well. And here's what happens if I turn it on without spinning the flywheel. It just sits there buzzing and damaging my bearings. I don't do that for too long. This is what the bearings look like after too much heating. Plenty of carbon coating. Once they're like this, the motor no longer works. How does the ball bearing motor work? As you can guess from the name, the magic happens inside the bearings. Here's what's inside these types of bearings. They're all these balls that are held apart by this metal called a cage. We'll ignore the cage. They contact this inner ring here and this outer ring here. The proper name for each ring is a race, but I'll call them rings for clarity. The balls keep the two rings apart, but also allow them to turn independently of each other, with very little friction. In this motor, the outer ring is held in place by the copper strip. When the power is turned on, the current is from one ring, through the bearings, to the other ring. That current is often in the hundreds of amps. Where the balls touch the rings, there's some resistance, and that causes heating. This heating causes the bearings to bulge there. Normally that would cause the whole thing to lock up, or seize, as the bulges push on the rings in these directions. But, if you give it a turn first, then as each ball bulges, the bulges are moved away from the contact points. Those bulges push in the opposite directions on the rings, causing the rings to move with respect to each other. And that's how the heating produced by the high current causes motion. This process keeps going as long as there's current, or until a high current causes damage somewhere. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more fun videos like this. That includes the one I mentioned about how I remove the grease from the bearings, another on how to make a speaker using piezoelectric crystals, and one on how to make a simple AM radio transmitter. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!